Okay, welcome back. This is the Audulous Module Library Tutorial 1.8, Multiple Sequences. As always, I'll read through the patch and then we'll talk a little bit about it at the end. Okay, so this patch consists of two voices. The first top voice is a randomly arpeggiated melody line. The second bottom voice down here uh, is a slow moving bass tone. The random non-repeating sequencer is running faster than the random sequencer. This is the random non-repeating sequencer and the random sequencer. The R and R works as an arpeggiator, and the random seek uh, is the bass note being played. So you can think about this as like you're pushing your finger down. This is the note that's being played on the sequencer, and then this uh, R and R is like the arpeggiating pattern that's playing as you're pushing your finger down. Okay, so we'll come back to this. Uh, the r, r sequencer's arpeggiation pattern repeats twice per note, so you can see each one of these notes is going here, and for every note here, it goes around twice, right, because it's going twice as fast. Uh, r and r se uh, sequencer, four measures repeat themselves, then randomize, so every time uh, the output of this clock divider pulses this randomize input, you can see uh, that the sequences over here randomize again. Um, then a 16th note gate, so you can see this is set to 16th notes coming here through the clock divider. The divide by one uh, goes to this input, and then the random sequencer, this one, four measures, uh, then repeat, then randomize. You can see it's still being randomized by the same um, the, the same gate output here, uh, but this one is gated by a quarter note gate. You can see here, so it's going slower than this one. The uh, three to one mixer uh, combines both signals before sending them to the delay. So you have this voice here and this voice here. We'll pop down to this voice. Uh, the random generator uh, generates a new value every measure. So we have the random generator. And this is like a, um, a module that is a sample and hold with a noise source um, already in it. And we have a 16 divided by 16 is one measure. So every measure this pulses and generates a new value uh, and that value gets sent on and becomes a note that this VCO is playing. Quantizer tiles snap the random notes to a scale. So you have the quantizers here, they're both set to D Lydian. Uh, the slew limiter tile on this voice here adds some glide between the notes. This sound right here is always playing, so it doesn't need a VCA or an envelope, right? So it, it doesn't have an envelope. You'll hear in a second that it's just always, it's a drone in the background. It doesn't, it just changes from note to note. So it doesn't need a VCA or an envelope to, to do that. Um, the LFO adds a little variety to the sound by changing the fold parameter of the VCO. So you can see the output, this modulation output is going to the modulation input of the VCO and changing the fold amount, you can see here. Then uh, over here, the two poly knob tile uh, stereoizes the delay and the stereo width tile adjusts the stereo field. So we have a mono signal. You have these two voices that are getting combined in this mixer, and this is a one mono signal, and then it goes through this delay. Now, if this wasn't here, this two poly knobs, this is no longer stereo. You can see how the two disappears there from the wire. Uh, this indicates that you have a poly signal, a stereo signal that's running through, and what this is doing, is instead of having to have two different delays like this, and then kind of sending one to the left and one to the right, uh, you would then have to, you know, between these two, you'd have to set the parameters the same on both for them to be equal on both sides. We're, we're not interested in, in uh, having two separate mix controls, two separate feedback controls. We just want two separate time controls. So that's why we take the two poly knobs control, we take this poly signal and attach it directly to that knob. And we can set a ratio here of, you know, this is point, uh, point 0.5 and 1, and then we can adjust the total output. You can see here the value node. Uh, so the value of this knob is 0, uh, 0.09 and this knob here is 0 0.18. If it was cranked all the way up it would be 0.49 and you know 0.5 and 1. But this way we can keep a ratio in between these two knobs and so they, they have a ratio together but then overall you're changing both of these knobs at once using this out uh, output knob. This is really useful when you want to stereoize effects um, with, without much uh, uh, input right there. So in the stereo width, 
basically, so you have two delays that you'll hear that are coming in uh, on one side and the other, and the stereo width just can reduce that stereo width so you the, the delays aren't locked in both, um, uh, completely in both sides. It kind of brings them back together, and that kind of uh, cements the sound a little bit more. So, okay, finally, we'll turn the patch up and we'll talk about it a little bit, and, and uh, things will become more clear when you hear uh, different voices. So, if I take this voice off, this is the bottom voice, let it go. You can hear this is the first voice, and this is the second voice. So, oops, oops. We'll focus on this one for a second. So again, what this is, what this is doing here is you have this random sequencer that's creating a random series of notes. And that's creating a modulation signal. We're, we're reducing it by a, a lot with this attenuator tile and sending it to the input of this mod to uh, modulation to octave converter that takes this modulation signal and converts it to an octave signal. We'll talk about um, the octave signal a little more in the VCO tutorials uh, that are coming up. But for now, just know that what this is doing, again, is like, it's like it's playing uh, this is this sequencer is like your finger pushing down on the keyboard and changing around to different notes whereas this sequencer is playing a pattern uh, above that so th this is like the arpeggiator and this is like the note that's being played and they're combined through this module here that's being sent through the quantizer it snaps those it, it, you can see if I skip this that it doesn't sound in tune anymore so, what this does is it snaps it to a scale. Okay, and that's especially useful when you have a random sequencer like this where it's just creating random values. You want it to sound like it's in key, just push it through a quantizer. Now, we have this voice over here. I'll take that off. And again, this is creating a new note every measure, again getting translated into a, a range with the uh, modulation the octave converter, sent through a quantizer, and then the slew limiter, this is the thing that's calling that kind of glide in between the notes, uh, and then sent to the VCO. And because this is always playing, it doesn't need the VCA to kind of define the contour of the note, it's just like a long, endless tone that's just droning on. So you don't need to have a VCA. Uh, envelope to, to make that work. Okay, and we'll focus, we'll take this off again so we can focus in on the delay sound and hear it uh, a little more. So, okay, we're gonna adjust the overall output time here. I can increase the mix. You can hear how the time is changing, but the ratio in between the two times is staying the same. And that's what is so useful about this uh, knob, to be able to just change both of those at the same time. You know, I could set them to something really close to each other, so like, it still gives you a stereo effect where you have just a little bit of time difference between the two. But then, uh, so they, they sound like they're a unified delay, but just a little bit of uh, um, time between both sides. Because if, if it was the same like this, you can see how it immediately collapses to a kind of mono sound. But if you reduce that, immediately you hear it kind of widen. Again, listen for listen really close, then you can hear it kind of disappear into mono. Because you have learned so many new concepts from 
all of these patches put together, and we're just really focusing on the clock here. We haven't even got to the VCO, we've got VCAs, filters, envelopes. There's so much more to explore in the future with these tutorials, and um, I, I just want to you know, say congrats that you got this far. It, it, it's a lot of information to take in. I've tried to keep these tutorials as short as possible so you can kind of uh, digest them easily. Uh, but right now you've learned enough at this point to make this patch. You know, you can just take it apart. You can kind of, uh, you know, insert different things here and there. Just turn the knobs and turn it into something. You know, change the scale. If you change the scale alone, it will sound like a completely different patch. Change the VCO um, uh, uh, wave shape and it'll sound different. So you have a lot already, a lot of ingredients, a lot of uh, tools in your toolkit to create some really fantastic patches. And as you keep going along with these tutorials, you'll just learn more and more. So uh, stick with it, uh, stick with me, and uh, you'll, you'll find out that Audulous has so much more to offer just in uh, our, the built-in module library, let alone in, in future tutorials, uh, what I'll show you about how to come up with an idea for a module and then build that yourself from uh, nodes. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.